Mark on the Gospel according to Mark. Bible reading number 319 is where we are. And we're studying the parables, but we're studying Mark from the Greek text because of, by way of request. People, I haven't been teaching Greek directly for quite a while, so I'm doing this in the Gospel of Mark anyway. We're in verse number 12, 4 and 12. We're talking about the parables. Hina blepontes, bapusen kai me, edusen kai akus, akuontes, akuusen kai me, sinesun me pote, apis treps osen kai Afite Altois. In order that seeing they may see and they may understand, in order that seeing they may understand, the word seeing there is blepusen. And seeing is bleponte there, also we have two different. Well, first of all, we have an omniplural masculine present participle act of that play, blepontes, and then blepusen, and seeing they see. Third person singular present indicative active there, and not. Here is a different word now. This word is edusen. Edusen, it, it comes from the idea to, uh, to see with your mind's eye and to see with your brain, so to speak, to see with your brain. You see with your eyes, and it goes to your brain. Those that were not initiated, those that were fighting, those that were rejecting Jesus Christ could see with their eyes, but it wouldn't go to the brain. Simple as that. There was a block between their eyes and the brain. There was a block between their ears and the brain. That's what it's talking about. The blockage, the spiritual paralysis, that it caused the blockage between their ears and their eyes and their brain, the spiritual paralysis. Their spiritual paralysis was that they did not want to believe in Jesus the Messiah. In order that seeing, they see, and not they understand. The spiritual blockage there, the, the eyes were not getting to the brain. I have this problem, I was pro poisoned with propane two years ago now, and my eyes sometimes won't get the signal, my eyes are very good, they say, 2015 vision, which is very exceptional, but sometimes the impulse from my eyes doesn't get to my brain, it scrambles it and I start seeing partial blindness and things because of this problem. And then my ears, uh, <laughs> I laid down, and here is what we're talking about. We're talking about the eyes, and we're talking about the ears. I laid down with 80% hearing on a Wednesday when they put, or put uh, air conditioning in my house and left the propane line loose. I woke up with zero hearing almost, 20% hearing at the most now. The impulses between my ears and my brain were severed. And these here had spiritual paralysis. They had spiritual blockage between the eyes and the ears and the brain. In order that, Blecontes, seeing they may see, they can see with their eyes. But, now we have here a little word chi there, that's page 208. But sometimes chi is like used like a strong adverse conjunction, but instead of and. And right here, you could actually put it as but. Seeing they may see with their eyes, but it's not going to get to the brain. But not they will able to what we call take the information that they see and use it in their brain. It doesn't get from there to there. Mm -hmm. And, again, Kai and, page 208 there, 
and hearing, aku ontes. Hearing, nomni plural masculine present participle active hearing, comes from aku. And akusen, hearing, they may hear, or they hear, but again, strong adversity in conjunction, page 208 chi, but not. Little old particle of negation there, page 268, which I need to write down here. I actually remember these page numbers. I haven't written them down all the time. But not particle of negation. They can put it together. It doesn't get to the brain. There is a, uh, what we might call, like the... Uh, the Berlin Wall, behind the Mormon Wall is what I used to say to the people over there in Utah. I said they were behind the Mormon Curtain, the Iron Curtain. These people have subjected themselves to an Iron Curtain. The Iron Curtain. The Iron Curtain of theology. They have held on to their false ideas from the Mishnah and the Talmud and they will not hear the truth. Jesus is the author of the Bible. He's the author. He said he was. But these people had reinterpreted the Bible so much that they no longer knew what the Bible really said. Sharon was talking about this to me the other day and and I saw it on YouTube also, there was a, a Jewish boy there that was, had been, you know, the, the way they studied the Bible is they go to the mission and the Talmud. The way you study the Bible is you go to the Bible. If you can go to the original languages, that's the real good. But anyway, this boy had been reading the Mishnah and the Talmud, and that's the way they study, you know, oh, what this guy rabbi said, what that rabbi said, and everything else, what, it's, what they said the Bible said. But he said he was so excited that he started studying the Bible itself. It was a brand new revelation. The Bible will tell you what it means. And hearing they may hear, but not they may get it in their brain. Sin eme is the word there. Sin usen. That third person pro present subjunctive active, subjunctive mode. It means they have chosen not to do it. And now verse number 9. Epistepsen kai afite atois. Lest, may pote, lest perhaps. This is a little particle of negation and an interrogative particle there also that may and pote, and they may turn back. This is uh, one that Sharon had quite a little trouble with. Now God sometimes, let's, let's put it this way, some of these people were so entrenched in sin and rebellion against God that they were not worthy of the truth. They were so entrenched in the hate of Jesus that they wanted to murder him and they were willing to lie. They were willing to commit perjury. And here they are religious. They're doing this in church, by the way. They're going to church to figure out how to kill somebody. Can you imagine that? Going to church to figure out how to, how to kill somebody. Take a, take a course in assassination. That's what the Sakari were. They kill people, yet they're religious. Now, <clears throat> they went to church and they figured out how to kill Jesus. They tried and they plotted with each other. They had a special meeting. Let's figure out how to murder. How can we get somebody to, to lie about him? How can we get somebody, can we pay this guy to lie? These are all against the commandments of God. Were they looking... No, they were not looking at the Bible. They were looking at the interpretation of the Bible. Now, 
bringing this out politically a little bit. The radical Democrats today don't want to hear your side of the story if you're a conservative. They don't want you to even say your side of the story. They don't want you to allow to speak against them, the radical Democrats. Now, probably most of my life I was known as a what you call a conservative Southern Democrat, which now is the Republican Party now. <laughs> it changed. Things changed. Abraham Lincoln's, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's Repu Republican Party was about like a radical Democrat party today. But they don't think that you have anything to tell them. They don't want to hear your, your part of the story at all. They don't think you should be able to even speak in public about it. They don't think you have anything useful for society. These people were like that. These people were so steeped in their sin and their religion. And their religion made them greater sinners than without religion. Their sinning religion made them a greater sinner than if they'd had no religion. Now that's something saying something right there. Yeah. The message that I taught yesterday on uh, the unforgivable sins. These are those unforgivable sins right here. Me pote epistrep susan kai afite autois. Lest, or perhaps, they might turn back. When I see this word, um, I didn't go in the military at all, but I was in the Boy Scouts for a short time. I didn't have much time for anything except working when I was young. But I did go to a few Boy Scout meetings and they taught me how to march. And uh, you go like this and you do about face, you go like this. Like that, you do an about face. That's the term right there, it's the military term, do an about face. Lest they do an about face and turn back and it should be forgiven or it might be forgiven to him, them. The iron curtain of religion. They had blocked their own minds from hearing the truth. They did not listen to Jesus' message. They only listened so somehow they could take and tear him apart. And you look at uh, leaders today, they try to take leaders today, you make a speech and they try to make them say something that they didn't say and use it against them. That's exactly what they were doing to Jesus. They were trying to take what he said in truth and use it against them. One of the things there, he, he told them, he, he tells us to to honor Caesar. You know, they brought a coin to him. And they said, uh, he, they asked him, should we pay taxes to Caesar? And he said, bring me a coin. So they had Caesar's image on the track, on the, on the coin. He said, well, to, to, to Caesar, to God be glory, but to Caesar. In other words, to each his own. Verse number 13 now, he's going to explain something here. First of all, he had to tell us that some of these people, he didn't want him to be saved. These people just go to hell. They just go to hell. That's where they belong. And we all belong in hell in, in, in ways, of course. We're all horrible. I was talking on ham radio today, and we talked about the, the sinful nature, the deceitful nature of mankind. It's very hard to put a public leader in because there are so many corrupt, so much corruption in, in Washington, D.C., the swamp, the corruption in Washington, D.C. How, how can you expect them to do anything 
righteously, rightfully for you when they're solidly corrupt. Many times uh, presidents will tell people what they want to hear and they laugh at them because they believe them. They laugh because they believe them. I knew a person one time, a very wicked woman, very wicked woman, and she would laugh at people because they believed her. She would laugh. They're so stupid. They're so stupid. Because they believed her. Verse number 13 now, Kai Legay, Autois uk oidate tain parabole tau tain kai kos podas aposas that is tas parabolas no seste. And he says, the word here kai again, page 208, in your little analytical Greek lexicon. And he says, third person singular present indicative active. Lego, legay, legay, legomene, legay, legusi, legay. That's how you conjugate that one. And he says to them, dative plural, masculine, third person pronoun, who are them? Not, you know, the parable. Didn't you understand the parable, Odate? Now here we had the word Oida. Ye understand, you know, didn't you get it, didn't it go from your ears and eyes to your brain? Because the other ones have a spiritual iron curtain from their eyes and ears to the brain, the spiritual iron curtain. That the parable, this, Parable, polybole. We got a word parable right out of Greek there, by the way. The parable, tain, parabolain, accusative singular feminine, and accusative singular feminine noun. The parable this. Didn't you understand the parable this? But how all the parables ye will understand you shall understand for yourself. Because the Spirit of God was working in them. The Spirit of God would make known the parables to them. It's like an automatic. It's like turning on... If you go on a radio there, a ham radio, and some radios have built-in interpreters. And Sometimes some radios will even interpret a person's voice and it will say, Hi there, I'm so-and-so. And it will give their call sign on there. And sometimes you can go in there and go on to CW, that's a constant wave or Morse code. You go on to this Morse code and you hear it going, Da, dit, da, da, did it, did it, did it, did it, da. All of that, you'll hear it doing that. And it'll put up on the screen, it'll say, Hi, my name is Jim in Fish Lake Valley, Nevada. My call sign is N7IU. And it'll do all this. Automatic, it'll just be out there on the screen interpreted. Now the Holy Spirit is like that in so many ways. And Donald Greer, I hope you're liking this over there in, in Wales, since you're a ham operator also. And he says to them, Not you know that the parable is, and how all the parables you will know and understand. It, what you hear and what you see is going to get to your brain. Verse number 14 now. Ho speron, ton lagon espere. All right. Now the cross reference to this is Matthew 13, 18 through 23 and Luke 8, 11 through 15. In the synoptics, synoptics that means you, and that word comes from two Greek words also, seen together, and optics that means to see. Ophthalmos is eyes. We got an ophthalmologist, somebody that, that uh, studies your eyes as an eye doctor, optometrist, somebody that helps you see with glasses or contact lenses or something. The one sewing the word. Tone logo and the one sawing there. 
That is not a singular mass and present participle active. Now the one sowing, he's going to tell you who that is. But I'm sowing the word. The word there. You can look at this physically and spiritually too at the same time. Tone low gone. The word of God. The word of God here basically is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is that Jesus came into the world. He was born at the right time and the right place. He lived. He had been born of the right parent, Mary, and Joseph even, because Joseph, through him, he got the, the what we might call the royal heritage, the royal lineage, even though Herod was on the throne. <coughs> Anthony and Cleopatra had put him on the throne. Herod the Great. The one sowing the word the Word. You can set in here the Word of God or Jesus. The story of Jesus. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation is basically a story of Jesus. A story of Jehovah. The one sowing the Word, he sows. The one sowing the Word or the Gospel, he sows. Third person singular present indicative active. Now number 15. Verse number 15. Hutoi de Usen, or Asen, that is. Hoi para tain hogon, hupo, spere the, ho logos, kai hotan akuusen, youthus erketai ho satanus, kai. I ray tone logon tone es paro menon es autos. <clears throat> These ones, moreover, it starts out with a day, a little weak adversity conjunctive particle there, page 85, in the little analytical lexicon. Moreover, that's like a weak but. Moreover, or furthermore, these, these ones, that word who toy there's the demonstrative pronoun, that's nominative plural masculine. They are, third person plural present indicative, they, they are and they continue to be, Asen, the ones, beside the road. These are the ones beside the road. These are the ones on the roadway, the hard packed down ground. Now I left this up here and there's roadways around the field and this roadway is hard packed down ground. Seeds don't go in that ground. Now a lot of times when you what we call broadcast seeding and I did that down on the farm I went out there and I threw seed all over the pasture out there, a good pasture seed, pasture grass, and I would throw it out there and then you, to, to make it work better, you go out there with like a, a spike tooth hair or something that you would scratch up the ground and you would sow some of it in there, would loosen up the ground. You don't loosen up the ground around the field, it's hard. By the roadway, the hard packed ground. Where it was sown, sperete, third person singular, present indicative, act, passive, it was sown, the word. And the word there again, ho logos. Now, in John 1 1, it says, kai ho logos, kai ho logos, and the word, aim, kai ho logos, aim pro son tingon. In beginning, in RK, ain ho logos. In the beginning, kept on being the word. Now the word there is a, a equivalent of the word hadabar from Hebrew, which is a replacement word for Jehovah. In beginning, kept on being Jehovah, and Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead because Jehovah kept on being God. 
That's a translation of the meaning in John 1 and 1. And beginning kept on being the word, in R.K. Ainho Logos. In beginning kept on being the word. Now the word here he's talking about, basically, is the same person. It's talking about the Bible. But you can look at it, these people, Jesus is trying to tell him, I am Messiah. He's trying to tell them that I am the Messiah. I am your king. I'm your savior. They didn't want him. They already had a religious system. And I've looked at this so many times that people that are Catholics, people that are Jehovah Witness, people that are Mormons, and they hear the Word of God, and they, you know, you take the Word of God, it takes care of itself. You can't. Now, the Catholics, they don't want them reading the Bible. And they sure don't want them going to another church someplace and listening to the gospel preached. These are things that are very often forbidden. If you're a Jehovah Witness, you can't even read somebody else's literature at all. You've got to read Jehovah Witness literature all, also. Or that Satan, the devil's going to get you. And the Mormons, they always tell their people, if you go out on the mission field, they are a mission field. They are a mission field. But if they go out on a mission field, if somebody talks to you and you start feeling real bad, in your spirit, like you're doing something wrong, that something is not right, you run from them because that's the devil doing that to you. It's the Holy Spirit doing it. But they're telling them it's the devil doing it. The one who sows the word, the gospel, about Jesus Christ, and when they might hear, third person, plural, first heirs, subjunctive, active, they might hear immediately, useless, immediately. That's a word that Mark likes to use. Immediately. It's a, an active word. It is a, like a Hebraism, now. Immediately, a little adverb, he comes. Third person singing, present indicative middle. He comes because he wants to. You know, Satan never takes a vacation. Satan is always on the prowl. And he comes and he wants to come because that's what he wants to do. He wants to, he wants to take everyone that hears the word of God and twist it up somehow. Complicate it. Pervert it. And he comes, the Satan. Ho Satanos. The word Satan means our adversary. It means actually one who destroys. One who destroys, one who kills. And how many people has Satan drug into hell with him? How many people will be there with him forever? He's not the king of hell either. He's just another guy down there. Another guy in hell. There are no kings in hell. And he uh, comes Satan and he carries away. The word is Iro there. That's where it comes from. It's Ira. But it's Iro. It's where it comes from. Third verse and singular present indicative active. And he comes and he, he carries away the word. He gets it out of there. He does something. Somehow, or they don't understand the word. The one, the word having been sown unto them. Having been sown. Esparomon manon. Accusing singular, neuter, present, or perfect participle passive. The one having been sown in their hearts, in their way. He steals it out. Steals it. Takes it away. Runs off with it. The iron curtain of false religion. The iron curtain of false religion. Satan doesn't mind people being religious at all. He's got religions that he founded. The, the Mormons, Jehovah Witness, Catholicism, all of these. Satan found it founded it. Buddhism, Islam, all of these religions, Satan founded them to keep people from believing the truth. To keep people on the road to hell. They'd be religious and hell bound behind the religious iron curtain. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. 
Please use it wherever it goes. I pray that it touches lives everywhere in the world. Please feed your sheep wherever it goes. And give it your speed wherever it goes.